Good evening, everybody, and welcome into this week's all-new edition of the Milford Informer. I am your host, Tim Coet. While summer technically doesn't come to an end until later this month, we've sadly reached the unofficial end of summer, with the calendar flipping to September. The good news is we'll be back with you each and every Friday night moving forward, bringing you the latest news and sports items from around town. So without further ado, let's dive right into this week's show by bringing you tonight's top stories rundown. Tonight, we'll recap last month's Milford Youth Center Telethon hosted right here on Milford TV, and we'll let you know if the Youth Center was able to meet their fundraising goal. And later in sports, we have a pair of fall sports previews for you. First, you'll hear from the captains and coaches, as well as some of the seniors from this year's Milford field hockey team. And then we'll turn our attention to the girls' volleyball program as they look to follow up on a tremendous 2016 season. Last month, Milford TV and the Milford Youth Center got together to put on a very special live telethon to help raise money for a new multi-purpose media room over at the Armory Building. The six-hour live television event proved to be a huge success and also provided some quality entertainment along the way. So we thought we'd look back on the event with a few highlights while also showing you the official final total of funds raised for the Youth Center. Welcome to the Milford Youth Center's First annual telethon, annual because we'll be doing this again year after year because you guys are so generous and we're going to have to find something else to raise money for next year. You're going to see a show here, right? Yeah, yeah. They, All right, who do we have behind us okay, here? Okay, we have Lauren Materia who's been jumping since the second grade with an after school program. That's how it started with Lauren. Uh, the phys ed teacher had an after school program and she's been jumping since then. She's now 17 years old. She's going to be a senior at Nipmunk High and Max Moreau, who's been probably jumping a little more on his own, kind of took it up with the video. Take it up to the end. You're part of the youth center, right? Yeah, I've been, I went there for a while, and um, in the day out, I'm, house man out there and uh, I brought my guitar, I played music for the kids and they loved it. Now they don't have a music department there, they don't have a room yet. How, this is very important, right? You're a musician, you can understand this. Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm in a new band, I mean, it's called Stereo Love, Boston has Stereo Love, and it's just like all cover songs, so I can play anything like Bob Marley, so. All right, so let's get those calls in, let's raise some money, I think we're up to $300 now. Jake, you ready to go? I am ready to go. All right, yes. we'll chat after uh, Jake Martin. Let's hear it for Jake Martin, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! <laughs> I met this girl late last year. She said, don't you worry if I disappear. I told her I'm not really looking for another mistake. Calling a phone friend, thinking that the trouble would wait. And then I jumped right in. Turn. I reckon she was only looking for her lover to burn But I gave my time for two or three nights Then I put it on pause until the moment was right Went away for months until the past crossed again You told me I was never looking for a friend Baby, you can swing by my room around ten Baby, bring the lemon and a bottle of gin We'll be in between the sheets till the late a.m. Baby, if you wanted me, then you should have just said singing. God, Sally. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our telethon from Milford Youth Center, raising money for the uh, the music room that they're they're trying to build. And we're also taking donations of used equipment. If you have any instruments at home lying around, you want to donate them to the cause, give us a call here at the station. Call the number on the screen. Um, call me if you, if you know how to get in touch with me. All my musical friends out there, if you have something to donate, please do so. We've got a whole bunch of great acts coming up, and uh, let's keep the ball rolling with uh, Unwanted, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for Unwanted. Thank you. America. I'm not a part of 
the redneck agenda. Uh, it's 3 and my must be lonely. She says, baby, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't help to be scared of it all sometimes. Bring on the wash away, I believe it. I believe it. You know these guys. You want to help me out with this, Jim? Because sure. you know everybody over there. Well, sort of. This studio is packed right now, and it's all because of the uh, Milford football Joshua team, Gordon Milford High School football win. team. All right, fellas. Let's go, let's go. 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 let Let's hear it for Jake, ladies and gentlemen. What? <laughs> All right, so that was exciting. That was uh, disgusting. Right, wasn't it? A little bit, right? Mick Lawless now joins me. Uh, hi, Mick. How are you? Ray, good, man. Good to be here. Nice cause. Feeling like an outcast. So I'm hidden underground to make your scene. Meet me on the common in the rotary of life. Can circle once or twice, living in between. What are some of the basic programs you guys offer? Um, during the school year after school, we always have a nutrition program, we have an arts and crafts program, we have a youth council, um, we have a science club, we have um, after school help, we have CrossFit, we have yoga. Almost anything you can think of, yeah, except music, mu yeah. right? Yeah, right. So that's like the last thing. You just mentioned science and education and sports, a lot of sports, right? Yeah. Um, and music is the last thing. So what, what's the design going to be like? What can we expect from this new room? Can you give me a little rundown on what you guys are hoping to design? I'm not completely sure. Jen knows more. But um, I know that we want to get some soundproofing and mm. some furniture. Um, and just some equipment so the yeah. kids can start working with it. This isn't just for construction costs. This is for instruments, too. We need right. a lot of it. And those can be expensive. Right, exactly. All right, so you have a uh, presentation, right, on I an do. official post-it note. Well, then I'll show this. <laughs> <laughs> That's official, baby. So, <laughs> so from Bob's Discount Furniture Charitable Foundation, we have $1,500 for furniture for the room. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. We, we talked about uh, backstage, we were talking about how the cash goes a long way, but there's a lot of businesses out there that could donate their services as well. Exactly. So I just wanted to mention that you don't have to donate money. Um, if you want to come down and teach some lessons or if you have some old instruments that you want to donate um, or if you want to donate your time to help build the room, we'll definitely accept all those things. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And here's Rob. Da 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 circus da 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 Afro circus Afro circus Afro poke it up poke it up poke it up Afro. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. That was a great performance. That's my ball. <laughs> $6,885 now, so that is amazing. We want to thank everybody for, <laughs> for, that was Rob, that was all Rob's fault. <laughs> he stepped on it. Um, we want to thank everybody for donating their time, for coming in today, and donating money. I want to thank Paul Beck, who took Mick Lawless's challenge, even though Paul Beck doesn't own a business. He said, why not? I'll, ch I'll take the challenge. And Paul Beck donated $40. Um, you can find that, I think, I think I put that on my Facebook page. Um, calling out to all the businesses out there that might be able to uh, take up uh, Mick's challenge. He's the, he owns the Nevermind Shop in Upton. He said, I'll do 40 bucks if other businesses do it. So not too late. Call in. The number's on the screen or text your donation. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Justin Redden and myself, Ray Ozier, Justin and Ray. Well, she was an American girl Raised on promises 
She couldn't help thinking that there was a little more life somewhere else. After all, it was a great big world with lots of places to run to. When if she had a dog, tried she. School is now officially back in session and the first games of the 2017-2018 athletic year have already begun. But before we get too far deep into the regular season schedule, we have two more Milford High teams to preview. Last week we showed you how the football team was prepping for their upcoming season, which kicks off tonight in Quincy. First up tonight, let's take a look at how the Scarlet Hawks field hockey team is looking to continue to build positive momentum into their new season. The Milford field hockey team is gearing up for the start of a new season. The program is now under the watchful eye of MHS alum Kim Danish, whose years of experience as a player and coach has made her an ideal fit to lead the Lady Hawks varsity team. I played for three years in high school. I played freshman year, sophomore year, I was out with an injury. So it was kind of a unique opportunity for me to experience it from the sidelines. And I had two great coaches who kept me under their wing and kind of taught me how to coach, um, which was great. And then I came back my junior year, had to stop playing because of an injury. And then I came back to the program my senior year of college. Um, the former, former coach, Emily Abadanza, had me on as like a volunteer assistant as, as a senior in college. And then for two years after that, I was the JV coach under Emily, which was awesome. I learned a ton. She's a great coach. And then I took a year off because I was finishing up grad school, or starting grad school, I should say. And then last year was my first year as varsity coach. So I'm excited to be back this year and not have grad school on my plate and be able to dedicate a lot more time to the program. She's awesome. She was the JV coach when we were freshmen. Mm -hmm. So we already uh, know her coaching style a little bit, and she's just so much fun to be with, uh, along with Mr. Dowd too, Coach Dowd. He's really awesome too. I think we just have a really good coaching staff. Last year did not end with the win total the field hockey team would have liked, but there were still a lot of positives to take away from the 2016 season, and both Coach Danish and her seniors are looking forward to building on that momentum. Last year went well. We had, I think the highlight was we had phenomenal senior leadership and we had 11 of them and they each played a role in kind of shaping our team. So I think moving into this year, having played under that leadership, all seven of my seniors now will continue that tradition. We also had some, some gutty wins and some gutty performances. We lost, I think it was 2-0 to Oliver Ames, who was one of the top teams in our league. And it was raining and all kinds of bad weather and we just competed really hard. So that kind of mentality of, of grit, of passion, of toughness, determination has kind of stuck with our program and I'm hoping again this year my seven seniors can kind of teach that now to the new underclassmen. I think it's very different because throughout my all the years I've played sports I was always looking up to the seniors and I think it's a good year to be the one that's actually leading the underclassmen. I agree and I feel like as an underclassman like you kind of try to hide in the shadows a little bit just so people don't like I don't know but it's just nice to be like the older ones and have people look up to on the team. Yeah and we just have like a really good group of in our team this year and a good group of seniors and the teams are getting along really well. It's tough because some other towns have feeder programs so right now what we're trying to do is build up interest in not only the high school at the high school age but at the lower levels by doing clinics and things to get to the playoffs that's our that's our end goal so right now we're still a developing program which is nice because it kind of offers an opportunity to anybody who wants to try something new maybe they played soccer their whole life or maybe they're playing volleyball or whatever cross country anything and they can come here and they can try it so we really like that that it's a very inclusive program for all um, but we would like to make it to the playoffs so the next kind of steps are to get a program at the middle school level and maybe get some elementary camps going um, we have more and more players now doing camps in the off season and club teams which has tremendously helped us as far as being competitive in a, in a very difficult Hockamock League. This year's field hockey team boasts a large senior class, and at its core you'll find three dedicated captains who are ready to navigate their team through a successful season. My sister was a former captain, so she kind of helped me and like shaped me to like be like know what a good captain is and what I should like look for and be able to talk to like the girls and everything, so she really helped me. The captains that I've always had were great, amazing people, and I just, it's really an honor to be recognized as a person that can follow in their footsteps. I was really excited to be named a captain. I think it's, you know, a really great opportunity. I'm, you know, was so just 
you know, say excited again. I was so excited to be able to lead our team, um, to be able to sort of be the face of our organization, I guess, is such an honor. Um, and, you know, to work together with all of, you know, with all of our seniors are such leaders on the team. So um, it's so awesome to be able to work with all of them and to sort of show the underclassmen and then shape, you know, our, our varsity team this year and then even next year and the years after. I couldn't be more proud of my captains this year. They've done an excellent job in the off season. Um, I think they were getting the girls together. You know, we don't kind of know what they do in the off season, but um, you know, they, they've kept everybody motivated. It's been a extreme, an extremely fun group um, coming here. Everyone's always in a good mood. Shannon brings just this wealth of knowledge to the game. Um, she she plays club. She knows what she's doing. So so it's great to have Shannon around. Danielle helps a lot too. She's she's another one of our star forwards. So a lot of them look up to her. And then Emily is is just probably one of the nicest people you are, you'll ever meet so she helps a lot with kind of recruiting and she really helps everybody transition either to the sport for the first time or back into it and just keeping everybody positive I, I really all three of them are just such positive strong leaders and I think it's going to show this year in the field and as a coach I think this is probably one of the best groups of captains I've ever been lucky enough to have as a coach. The players and coaches feel this year's team has a winning combination of talent on the field and strength of character off the field. I'm a forward, so I'm on the front line, and so is Danielle, and uh, we just pretty much want to score, set up plays. Me and Shannon work really good together. We pass really well. Um, yeah, it's definitely comfortable having her right next to me. We've been playing with each other. I play defense. I um, We are sort of the last line, I guess, before mm -hmm. before the goal. Um, we just try to stop the ball from going in the net at all costs. Um, it's a little bit less intricate than playing forward. It's just, you know, getting the ball up the field. Um, a little scrappier, I think I would say, maybe yeah. down in yeah. uh, defense, a lot of shoving. Um, but it's sort of where I found my, my niche, I guess. I'd say our overall strength would be probably speed and athleticism. We've got a lot of fast players this year, which is awesome because you can't teach that. So we have a lot of fast players, so we'll be looking to play that into our strengths, as well as just kind of overall chemistry and just their personality. I mean, they really are a special group this year. I just think we're very close together, and when you play with people that you're close with, it just all falls in very easily. Yeah, I think there's not going to be any issues with communication because we all know each other so well. And I know this is cliche, but we are like a family, so it'll mm. be comfortable playing with everyone. So how does the team feel about moving forward through their always challenging Hockamock League schedule? It's competitive. There's, there's, they send a large amount of players to, to not only college, but Divisions 1 and 2. Um, so we play against a lot of really strong competition. So we'll have some teams that we'll compete with probably better than others. But the thing that we try to stress is, okay, like we're coming to this game and we're going to expect to win and we're going to do everything we can to win. But even if we're playing the top, maybe Canton or Franklin, they tend to be pretty strong. We set some game goals for that, and then after the game, we'll look at it like, what did they do well that maybe we should put in in our program? So as far as where we'll fall, you know, obviously we aim to, to fall on the top, um, but we're looking to compete hard this year and you know, hopefully try to sneak in and get those nine wins we need to make this tournament. We have a great team chemistry. All the girls, we get along so well. So it's definitely going to be a really fun year. We have uh, a lot of younger girls because we did graduate 12 seniors, I believe mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. And so just some of them have to step up, and I know they can do that. Um, so it's just going to be a really fun season. We can't be thinking about last year. Maybe we lost 17, 18 games, so that doesn't matter. Fresh year, we got... We're seniors now, we got to take hold of it and we have a good team. Yep. We just gotta put everything so behind us. Be optimistic. Yes, very optimistic. I have high expectations for our team. I mean we're not we're not here to mess around. So <laughs> I I want us to win. I know we're we're gonna win games. Um, and I am excited to get going, I'm excited to start our season. It was great to have a chance to spend some time with the field hockey team. We wish them well as they get into their 2017 fall season, and we'll be sure to keep you updated on their progress this year. So as the field hockey team looks to position themselves for a long-awaited spot in the playoffs, the Lady Hawks volleyball team is hoping to get back to the postseason for a second straight year. The girls' volleyball program has undergone some major changes from last season, both on their roster and on their coaching staff, but there is still plenty of confidence that the team will once again be battling it out for one of the top spots in the Hockamock League standings. The serve away by Kyra Alves, answered by Bouchard. Now returned back over, Zagami trying to keep it in, and it's in just inside the far sideline, and Zagami gets the kill that seals the set and the win for the Lady Scarlet Hawks. It was a breakout season for the girls' volleyball team a year ago. 
The Lady Hawks finished the regular season with 13 wins and advanced all the way to the district semifinals. Sadly, the coach that led the team to that successful year, Linda Zakili, was forced to step down due to health reasons, leaving the team in the capable hands of Dan Seaver. No matter what, it's not the exact situation that anyone really wanted. Um, but with the situation and the cards we were dealt, I think we're coming together pretty well. Um, she had everything already all set, ready to go, so stepping in was actually a lot easier than it probably would have ever been in any other situation. Um, and I still have her. You know, it's one of the best things that she didn't really step down. You know, if I need anything or if I have any questions, she's still around. I can go to her. She's already been to one of the practices already this year. So, you know, it's good having her around and it's, you know, great having somebody to go to. For this year's senior class, coaching changes have become the norm, with Coach Seaver becoming the fourth different varsity head coach to take over the program in their four years at Milford. It's weird because each season you have to come in with an open mind. You can't be closed-minded and like think things before they actually happen. But we loved Linda, and now with Coach Seaver, it's going good so far. So we're excited to see where the season goes. It's a little hard sometimes to have to adjust because each season we've had to adjust to different like coaching techniques and stuff like that. But it's it's great <laughs> to have him as a coach. <laughs> It is what it is, and it's all different coaches, coaching styles, but we're excited. For Dan Seaver, coaching at Milford High is now a family affair, with his older brother Paul already serving as the head coach of the Scarlet Hawks boys basketball team. I think it's great, and we're not really having too much of a rivalry because he gets you know, the boys basketball and I got the girls volleyball, so we don't have too much. I got more of an issue with you know, TJ going back and forth, but um, me and him have worked out well too, so me and Paul are working out. Him and TJ have been friends, so I've known TJ for a while, and you know, I think all the coaches here are really actually coming together very well. While last year's group of standout seniors will be missed, the program is in very good hands, led by a quartet of talented multi-sport athletes. To me, being a captain means being a leader both on and off the court and setting yourself to a higher standard and being a good role model for your team. For me, um, it's an honor to be named captain. I was named this season as opposed to these three. Um, it's truly a privilege to be named. I hope to set a good example for both everyone on our team and the kids in the younger ages in the program as a whole. When I was younger, I always looked up to the captains, and now hopefully they're going to look up to me this year. We have a really young team this year, so I hope I can be a person and a captain they can look up to and strive to be maybe their junior or senior year. They're great. They've had, you know, great leadership. If I can't see something, I know that they're pushing the entire team moving forward. Um, there's been situations where, you know, I have to run and talk to Coach Boucher. I come back in and, you know, they're running the drills, they're doing everything. So it's really great leadership that I have in them. After such a successful season last year, the captains, along with the rest of the returning players, are driven to do what it takes to get back to that level in 2017. I've never been in any kind of playoff game for any high school sports, so I was just like, it was, it was really amazing for me, good experience. Yeah, coming off a season where we missed it by one game, we also missed our basketball playoffs by one game the same year, so it felt really great to finally make it and get that experience of playing in a playoff game. I think we're in a great situation where we lost a lot, but we're in a good situation where our up-and-comers have seen it, have been there. I think it's a great situation to step in after that big run because, you know, now they can see that they can get there. You know, it's not just stepping into a program where hey, we can be there, yeah, but they've never been there before. It's pretty split in half. We have like eight returning players, seven or eight, and then we like the rest of the team are new. So it's kind of nice to like see some old faces and then to have new ones. And they all look up to us. And like it almost works as like, since there's like e there's an equal amount of both of us, so it's almost like we each kind of like could mentor a person. It's kind of nice. It's nice to have the underclassmen like sophomores on the team so you know you can start building your program now so when we leave we can come back and see a great volleyball team. <laughs> I think our team has a lot of raw talent coming from the underclassmen. Uh, Emily Pergasalvo joined the program this year. She had never played before and she's just one of those people who's very athletic so could pick it up fast so although she lacks an experience she has the athleticism to pull it off and a lot of people on our team are very talented, so it's just a matter of time before they get that experience and we can really be successful. Right now, I think that we have the skills 
to be there, to be just about with anybody that we've seen. Um, we took trips to Shrewsbury, we took a trip to Andover, we um, hosted Algonquin, so you know, we've seen the top team so far, so, and we've hung right with them. I think that the opportunity's there, it's gonna be how we come together. Like I said, I think that we have all the pieces to the puzzle, it's just gonna be, you know, what's working out best for us. I think our team definitely has the mindset to be a playoff team and go far into the playoffs. I mean, obviously the goal is to make it to where we were last year and even farther. And I think that we have the ability to do that this year. Coming up this Saturday, it's time to gas up those bikes and get ready for the 8th Annual Warrior Thunder Motorcycle Ride. Enjoy a scenic 45-mile ride, all while helping out a very worthy cause. The proceeds from the ride will benefit the Fisher House, which helps military veterans and their families. The race will kick off at the Medfield American Legion on 110 Peter Christoph Way in Medfield, with registration taking place from 9.30 to 11.15 a.m. and the ride beginning at 11.30 a.m. Again, the 8th Annual Warrior Thunder Motorcycle Ride is taking place this Saturday, September 9th. For last-minute info on registration, head over to the website warriorthunderfoundation.org. On Monday, the town of Milford will be holding a second Water Company Open Forum. The forum will once again give Milford residents an opportunity to ask questions to local officials and experts as the town continues to explore the possible purchase of the Milford Water Company. The open forum is being held this Monday, September 11th at the Milford High School Auditorium beginning at 6 p.m. And coming up on Tuesday, the group Milford Cares will be sponsoring a community forum on recreational marijuana in Milford. The forum is intended for all Milford residents who may have lingering questions regarding the upcoming September 19th marijuana ban ballot question. Among those who will be part of the forum panel will be members of Milford's Board of Selectmen and School Committee, along with State Representative Brian Murray and Dr. Jeffrey Hopkins, Medical Director Emergency Services at Milford Regional. The Community Forum is being held on Tuesday, September 12th, over at Upper Town Hall beginning at 7 p.m. For more information on the forum, log on to citizensformilford.com. We should have a very full show for you next Friday night. We will recap the Milford Water Company Public Forum, and we also hope to have some information for you on the marijuana ban ballot question to keep everyone informed before heading to the polls on September 19th. And of course, we'll have our first dose of fall sports highlights on the program next week as well. We hope you will join us for another all new edition of The Informer next Friday night. Until then, from all of us here at Milford TV, this is Tim Coet saying have a great week. So long, everybody.